Hey, what's up everybody? Video 44 coming up to another video. All right, so more talk of the Zach Levine contract. I've already condemned this contract to no end. Player is pretty solid. I mean, I'm not overly enthused about bringing him in based on that contract. Uh, the fit would be cool. Like, really cool is the word I, that comes to mind. Um, the thing about it is, you know, I don't want to recap the same stuff, but I do want to just kind of weigh in and just say a little bit. Zach Levine's a nice player that can really electrify the crowd. His contract is just getting started at like 30 plus million a year. And he's had injury issues that span back basically to the beginning of his career, including knee surgery. Now, he does have super athleticism that allows him to jump out the gym better than anybody, but it doesn't translate to him being durable at all. And I look at the idea of what they're trying to do, which is pairing his contract with AD, and I'm like, he's not even a player who's going to particularly compliment AD at all. When you consider what it is AD needs, he really needs someone who could do what he does so he could sit. Not somebody who's just as injury prone as him on a contract that's going to stifle us to having bad players as role players once again. I just don't think that's something to want. And if Jeannie Buss is paying close enough attention, she will look and see that. Is exactly that, something that's going to anchor her to having most of her cap wrapped up in injury-prone players. You know, it's like that's all he's targeting, Ralph is. He wants Bradley Beal, who misses like 30 year, uh, games a season, and Zach Levine, who misses like 30 games a season. You go to Parrot next to AD, who misses 30 games a season. It's like, what are we, do we want what's right for us, or are we just trying to do the wrong thing and hope it works out, like, you know, I'm, I'm irritated with the news, but I'm not so much irritated because I understand that this could be funneled to us to make the Lakers look bad. This could be funneled to us to f force the Lakers into taking on deals that they don't want to take on. Or maybe uh, this could be something that could be used as leverage to kind of use it, be misdirection. You know, it's a lot of different things. But my thing is, if I'm looking at it at face value, Zach Levine's contract is a salary dump. And if I'm going to require that salary dump, I'm going to want some draft equity to come with it. And that's the bottom line. You're going to have to give me the draft equity that's going to make that be something that I can live with. And in looking at his contract and in looking at how what I expect of him and in looking at what I have, essentially the Bulls don't have enough picks. They don't have enough picks. They're going to have to throw in a third team to get more pick equity to make that something I personally want as BDF 44, the Laker fan. I They don't have enough picks. You're going to have to give me about eight picks to take on the stranglehold that I believe Zach Levine's contract actually is. Because I don't look at Zach Levine as a winner. I don't. As a player, he's a nice player, but he ain't never won nothing at all. So it's like, I think he's going to need a lot of coaching to become a winner. So that means if he's going to show winning intangibles and things of that nature, and if we're going to put a winner around him, that's probably not going to be right away. You got Darvin Ham as a rookie coach. What does that mean? The first couple of years that we're playing him, he ain't winning nothing. We're running around not good enough, and we know it. And in the last couple of years, maybe we get good enough, but how when we structure the whole cap into him and AD? Is that a good enough core? No, of course not. Like, come on, man. Listen, I'm a Laker fan who's not really all that enthused about the rumors. Obviously, we have problems, and we're really stranglehold, and we don't have a lot of options, it seems. But I think those options are strangle held on the understanding that people are reaching for wanting the wrong things. And that's all it is. If you want the right things and you can actually obtain those things and you can be, you know, happy with what it is that you're getting. But if you're reaching for the wrong stuff and you go get that stuff and you get the problems that come with it. And then from there, you're not good enough. This is a not good enough move, man. In fact, it's a move that's going to assure that you're bad. You know what I mean, and all you're going to do is want to retrade Zach Levine as to which you may be able to retrade him, but not for the cost that you're going to pay for him. And so that's really what it is. It's just I want the Lakers to definitely not acquire any expensive contracts. I want the Lakers to definitely not look at this as their jewelry shopping, as I said in my previous video. You, when you look for, for basketball players, you want discounts. You want guys on rookie contracts, G League guys who could, you know, propel themselves into role players and, 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 and guys that you're not paying a million times more than you should uh to do the job you know and uh, in a way that they're not going to be able to deliver because of how you're structuring it it's like a double-edged sword too it's like not only are you not leaning properly because you're trying to build around three guys but because you're building around three guys you're going to be leaning on them because other guys are going to suck so it's like jesus we're seeing that 
Why are we continuing to sign up for that? You know, it's like I want our team to hear my voice in regards to this. Because I just don't like the path that it, it sends us down. It's not a good enough team. You're just okay. And you're adhering to pressures that are manufactured by media that can't even survive without you. You know, we're sitting up here trying to, oh, they're going to talk about us if we don't have superstar talent. They, they need to talk about us, regardless of who's in the uniform. It's like it's not even about that. They're going to talk about the Lakers if, 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 if I'm putting on a uniform because they need to talk about the Lakers to stay relevant. So it's like you don't you control what they do, not the other way around. Stop letting their pressure put crap, you know, in our, our situation based on adhering to it. No, what the Lakers should be doing is things the correct way. Then from there, they can plaster that out into the world because they're going to talk about the Lakers and how they're doing things correctly. Look at the Lakers rebuild. All oh, that go over with their young talent. And then those young talent would be superstars. Why? Because they're wearing Laker colors. Whoever we put in the uniform is going to be a star because we're going to make them a star. So the Lakers just got to start looking and wanting the things that they're, are they're actually going to help their franchise. Because at the end of the day, at this point, it's the complete opposite. This, and we can see it. And they're reaching for the wrong things. And they're going to have more of a hole. And their franchise is going to suck because of it. And it's going to be a, it's going to be a domino effect that creates more problems for Jeannie. And she needs to see that. Like, this is a headache for you. And you're heading down this path purposefully. And you got some really good fans who really love the team telling you this. Stop wanting the wrong stuff in regards to this basketball club we should want young talent an inexpensive talent unproven guys who are eager to play well then we will have a good deep team that superstars will want to come to and we'll have good you know cap situations that they can be slotted into and then from there we can keep them and we'll have the foundation that we're looking for and it won't be us skipping steps or saying that it took, you know, the fans aren't going to be able to handle it because it takes too long. I'm a fan telling you that I'm here all lifelong. And that means that I don't want to look out down the next 10 years and see a team that isn't any good because we didn't do things the right way right now. Y'all trying to put players on this team that are just going to slowly and surely meet father time. It's like, why the hell are we signing up for more father time nonsense? I don't want father time, bro. I want youngsters who are far and away away from that. You know what I'm saying? So that's my attitude. The father time, you know, grandfather Laker mindset. Let's let's forget, reach for yesterday's stars and give them all the money in the world so they can not be good enough. Uh, mindset is a loser mentality that's going to keep us from getting banners. And I don't want no part of it. I look at that as no different than any other antagonist that's trying to beat my team you, you are the jazz you are the celtics you are the clippers you are the blazers if you're working against us from within our organization and making us garbage <laughs> you are just another thing that needs to be overcome and so that, that's the reality of it we need to start putting pressure on people to not do the wrong things really fast but to start running the right things and getting it done please start running the right things lakers please trade whatever you need to trade to reset your timeline so that you can have that foundation and if the team is not very good because of it, that's equivalent to what it is that we're looking at right now. That's the bottom line. It's just the same thing. We suck right now. So that's that's why I'm saying let's do this. Do the teardown. Rebuild. If you could trade AD right now for a bunch of picks, if someone will actually pay that super price for him while he's hurt, which some of these teams actually should consider, given their circumstances, um, we should do that. We should make him. We should trade him today. If they would be willing to trade him, uh, take take on his contract for six, seven and a half picks and some players or something like that, you do that. Trade him to the Knicks right now. You know what I'm saying? Trade him to the Knicks right now. And when he gets healthy, he'll be right back ready to play with Julius Randle like he did in New Orleans. They'll make the playoffs. They'll probably even make the finals. That Knicks team is strong if they don't give up all their players. And in this case, they wouldn't be because they're giving me all their picks. I don't need none of those players. You can give me one of them. I'll take quickly or something. But other than that, I mean, I don't need no players. We're not trying to get better. We're just trying to get a future. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, let's, let's just be honest. I can keep my same young role players in rotation. Give me a couple of players to, to revamp the rest of the roster. And let's just finish out the season. I'd have traded AD for like seven picks and, a, and whatever the equivalent is. If I would have got back some players, I'd have parlayed them to another team to get more picks. I'm telling you, the rebuild would be real. I'm Utah. 
I'm Utah, y'all. That's where I'm at with it. This is Utah Jazz. We shaving everything. And in the summertime, if LeBron James wants to be a part of it, we here. We, we, you're a part of the rebuild. And the team's going to be good, too, because the young talent's going to be awesome. You just got to help them get better and, and lead them by scoring like you're doing now. He would be on the same team he's on now, just a lot better because the youngsters would be better. That's it. You can get the same 30 points, chase down Kareem, probably already passing by then. But, like, this is one of those situations where, like, he could have a good Laker team in two years. It wouldn't take no time because somebody going to want to join him and be a part of this with all these good youngsters that we'd be developing. You go play with LeBron. Yeah, you, how much do you think they need if the, the kids are good? All they probably need is you. All they need is Kyrie. All they need, you know what I'm saying? They don't need much if the kids are good. So that's what my mindset is. I already got a couple on this team that I like. You know what I mean? Some guys that I know are going to help us as they go forward. Probably not going to be too expensive, too. So we could probably keep them. Like you, the scouts did great. We're happy with that. We just got to make sure that we keep doing the same in that regard. Add maybe two or three more real, real live youngsters. More Austins, more uh, Winions and Maxes. You get us some more live youngsters that are real good. And just let LeBron continue to score the ball like he's doing. Don't take much, man. I'm telling you. And and that that would be it. You you stockpile because look, the reality is anybody that's saying LeBron don't want to play without AD, he is playing without AD. <laughs> it's like he playing without AD. He been playing without AD the whole time. Let's just be real. That whole argument about how LeBron wants to play with his boy AD, man. I mean, where is he? Where he at? I ain't seen him. He'd be here for five minutes and he right back in the street clothes, bro. So this whole argument about us needing to keep Anthony Davis, that argument is basically shot. This this injury, this particular injury shot that argument in the foot. No pun intended at all. But like it's seriously, this this it's over with. We gotta trade him if we can get all that stuff that we can. That's our responsibility at this point. Cause you building forward with him and then y'all wanna bring Zach Levine in, that don't make no kind of sense. If you're gonna bring me Zach Levine, you better get rid of Anthony Davis so that we can have some stability elsewhere. Cause it, it, Injury prone players everywhere is uh is exactly as bad as it sounds in the words. <laughs> that's what's what it's gonna be. You're gonna be missing players. This team's still gonna look just like it do right now. So hey, if that's what the Lakers wanna sign up for, it's gonna be a lot of fans who are gonna tune out. It's gonna be a lot of fans gonna be tuned out, and it's gonna be a lot of LeBron fans that's gonna be screaming, get my guy out of there. Which they should probably already be screaming, to be honest with you. I'm a Laker fan that, that is a realist. I'm a Laker fan that is not overexalted in myself and none of that. So I can tell you when the Lakers are, are a place that they that LeBron shouldn't want to be at. Yes, we yeah, we're there. We're about there. Regardless of who made what mistakes or what or why, it doesn't matter. If it's his fault, it, it doesn't matter. You know, like literally, it's not about that from his perspective. <laughs> it's about what he should want and where he how he should feel. He should want out. He should want out. These people ain't handling business properly, regardless who fault it is. It's as simple as that. So I want the Lakers to make a trade with the Charlotte Hornets. It doesn't involve bringing back Terry Rozier. It doesn't involve bringing back Gordon Hayward. But it involves bringing back all that other stuff that they're finding, all popping up all over their roster. And I want to make a trade with the Pacers, too. It ain't got nothing to do with with Miles Turner, it got nothing to do with Buddy Yield and them contracts that we have no interest in taking. No, I want some of them young kids that they're popping up all over their roster. You see what I'm saying? You're reaching for the wrong stuff. Yeah, I want to do with the deal with the Washington Wizards. Maybe it can involve Kyle Kuzma, but I want some of those other players like like Kispert and and and, and Goodwin that are popping up on the roster. That's the stuff that we should actually want, not the crap that we're reaching for. Yeah, I like to do a deal with the Bulls for sure, but I want Dylan Terry. I want Patrick Williams. You know what I'm saying? I want Kobe White. I want Ayo DeSumo. You see what I'm saying? I don't want them contracts they hold on that they're trying to get rid of so that they can create space for those kids. Hell no. I want those kids. Think about it. What are these teams trying to do? They're trying to create space for those players. Dummies. What the hell are you trying to give them the opportunity to do that by taking on the stuff that's keeping them from creating that space? Jesus. Common sense is very difficult to speak into this camera when you see it clearly and those in charge of don't. Simply don't. I'm telling you, those are the stars. I want the kids on the Rockets. I want the kids on OKC Thunder. I want the kids on Orlando. All the stuff that y'all were foregoing when y'all was trying to get Anthony Davis, letting everybody have your picks. That's the stuff I want on my team now. Dummies. 
gets to a point where you want to start calling people's names because they surely not learning from their mistakes. They surely not learning from you being nice to them. Sit up here looking at this. This this is folly, man. We're playing with the Los Angeles Lakers. Dr. Buss would not be pleased with what he's seeing out here, man. That's the bottom line. Kobe would not be pleased with what he's seeing out here. There ain't no blaming Bron today. Nah, he's been playing well. He's been doing what we asked of him. And now it's time for the front office to start doing what we're asking of them as well. And shave off bad contracts and stop coveting worse ones. BDF 44, I thank you all for watching. I'm out.